it's been a decade. We're ending out the 2010s, and a lot has happened in the last year in connectivity. Join us for a recap. Hi there, I'm Cherie. And I'm Chris. We're your hosts here at the Mobile Internet Resource Center. And we thought it'd be interesting to kind of look back at the 2010s and just how far mobile connectivity has come. Even though it still feels like a confusing subject, <laughs> we have really come a long way in the last 10 years. So if you were to hop in a, into a time machine and go back a decade, from, uh, a decade ago, you'd find at first glance, maybe things didn't seem all that different than they are today. You know, satellite was available, expensive, kind of clunky. Wi-Fi, campground Wi-Fi was around, but you sure couldn't rely on it. Marina Wi-Fi couldn't rely on it. And, well, cellular was a way to get connected, but only in the places you can get the right plans and the right service and the right coverage areas to combine. So, sounds like today, right? But a lot has actually changed. Exactly. And some of the biggest changes have been around cellular connectivity. In 2010, uh, 4G, or LTE as we know it today, was just starting to <laughs> emerge. So before you can even understand how far we've come in 4G and where we're going in 5G, you kind of have to understand how these generations have evolved and that cellular has now been around for nearly 40 years. Yeah, so the, the, the Gs are um, the generations of cellular. They were retroactively applied back to first generation cellular was back in the 80s and that was basically walkie-talkies. You could place phone calls over. It was all analog. Second generation was the 90s. It was digital. It was um, allowed for a lot more people to be connected. It allowed for a lot smaller devices with great battery life and it kind of revolutionized voice communication. But then 3G came along and introduced, that was basically the 2000s, and that was, hey, let's put data over these connections. So that's when we started to see smartphones supporting a lot of data on device, so checking your email, surfing the web, checking your flight status, and that sort of stuff, as well as mobile hotspot, the ability to use your data connection on your cell phone to get your devices online, your laptops, your computers, and other things, and then, and then even dedicated data devices like air cards back in the day. Remember those big express cards? And now we have, of course, mobile hotspot devices right. and cellular embedded routers. So, so back when we first hit the road in uh, 2006, uh, we were living on 3G cellular connections and, you know, kind of, you know, walking up, uphill both ways in through data in the snow. I don't know. It was, it was challenging, but it was definitely doable. Um, but things have improved and that the big transition was when we came to the 4G era. So fourth generation cellular, otherwise known as LTE, um, started to come about you know, basically at the beginning of the 2010s, really started to take off around 2012. And it's been the story of the decade because whereas 3G was kind of a layer on top of 2G, it allowed for a little bit of speed and data pretty much everywhere, but a little just not great speed potential. LTE was designed with speed in mind and data connectivity in mind, and the name LTE stands for long-term evolution. So it was designed to keep getting better and better and better as the decade went on. And we've seen that as new devices have come out, as the carriers have upgraded their towers, we've seen them make advancements in carrier aggregation or the ability to use multiple frequency bands at once. We've seen MIMO, multiple in, multiple out, or the number of antennas that towers uses, as well as the devices in our hands use as well as this thing called, how do you pronounce it? Is it Quam? Quam? Yeah. <laughs> yes, so, so, so 256 Quam is just the ability to send more bits of data over the equivalent amount of airwaves and the equivalent bursts of time. So so every generation, so what was a top-of-the-line LTE device uh, uh, you know, eight years ago, seven years ago, six years ago, what the top-of-the-line LTE devices can do now is so dramatically improved. The, the performance capabilities of the network has been advancing. And so as the devices, your phones, and your hotspots advance, and as the cell towers advance and they deploy these technologies, LTE has really lived up to its name. And it has basically been the connectivity story of the decade, where at the beginning, beginning of the LTE era, era, we would see maybe sometimes in good signal areas, maybe 20, 25 megabits per second down and six or seven or eight up. Oh, heck, I was happy to get one or two down. Yeah, oh, I'm talking about like the best possible signals. Now, this past year, we've had real world speeds of over 150 megabits per second downloads and over 50, even over 60 
megabits per second uploads. No, not all the time. No, those those <laughs> that sort of performance is still rare because, in addition to the LTE network's capabilities getting better and better and better, the number of people and the amount of data they're trying to use on those, those networks has been increasing even faster. So, um, yeah, the so the end experience has eh, sometimes basically been a plateau. But you find those peaks of incredible performance and coverage has been improving and improving and improving right. so and yeah 2010 we actually launched our first uh, our second mobile app and it tracked the coverage maps of the carriers so that we could plan our own travels and RVing <laughs> around where we could get signal and we went and looked back at those coverage maps back in 2012 which, which is when LTE the carriers started reporting their LTE coverage maps and it was so sparse I mean, you really <laughs> had to go looking for LTE coverage but today Every single carrier has blanketed the country, some more than others, but still, it coverage now today, compared to what it was back then, as far as for these fast speeds, is just amazing. Right. And now, is this going to continue? Well, long-term evolution is basically we're now coming to the end of the decade. That is, uh, every decade is roughly when a new cellular generation comes along that you know, breaks from the past, you know, takes all the technology, all the advancements that have been learned, and sets a new standard. And you know, basically paves the next decade's worth of evolution. And that's where 5G is coming in. Uh, 5G is, again, designed like LTE was to basically take the foundations of the past and just keep ratcheting up for the future. So LTE has kind of, kind of reached its peak of what it's capable of. 5G is starting there. So the first 5G networks really are no better than good LTE. But they're at that starting point where 10 years from now, they will be blowing us out of the water, and we've got another decade of advancement ahead of us. And just like 3G played a solid role well into the 2010s, 4G will still be around for quite a while, quite a while. especially for those of us traveling across the country and wanting to get connected in lots of different locations. 4G is still going to be a core of our setups for the foreseeable future. But that's not the only place where connectivity has gotten better. Um, uh, Wi-Fi and <laughs> campgrounds and marinas, while still not something you can depend on, uh, more and more businesses have taken it to heart that their customers want to be connected after a long driving day. They want to be able to get online. They want to be able to check uh, their forecast. They want to be able to train their next stop. And they probably want to stream some Netflix, too. And so Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi technology at the fundamental level hasn't been evolving at the same rapid pace as LTE. But there have been some major advancements. The um, 802.11ac, which is now dubbed as Wi-Fi 5, is becoming a little bit more prevalent. Um, we're just now going into the, the next decade going to see what's called Wi-Fi 6, 802.11ax, which is much better optimized for dealing with a lot of Wi-Fi congestion, which seems to be one of the biggest problems out there. Um, but the, you know, the, the Wi-Fi deployments happen so slowly. When people invest in putting in a Wi-Fi network into a campground or a marina, they're not really inclined to go back and replace it with newer gear. So this stuff rolls out very, very slowly into the field. And even now, we're just barely seeing a few places that have deployed 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. And that's been out for almost a decade. It's been out for available <laughs> for a decade. And 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi could takes uh, opens up a lot more capacity um, and a lot more potential speed and where we find it deployed at marinas and campgrounds it tends to be a great way to go to get connected but even here we are at the end of the decade and very very few long-range wi-fi devices still offer five gigahertz as an option so you know wi-fi has been evolving it's happening slowly not nearly as exciting but yeah it's there it's, it's there. still going to continue still to get evolving. better um and then satellite at the start of the decade, uh, HughesNet, Motosat, things like that were kind of the standard for satellite connectivity for our viewers. We actually used to travel with a tripod setup that we could move and set up at each location and get onto the HughesNet satellite dishes. We get slow speeds. We had daily caps of how much data we could use and big latencies. But you know, because of the um, satellite... Um because cellular was so slow to evolve out into the rural areas and cellular speeds were only ramping up slowly for the first half of the decade, satellite was the best possible option when you were out in so many parts of the country. But as the cellular coverage maps expanded and cellular speeds ramped up, satellite became less and le had less and less compelling for mobile users. And a lot of actually the players that were, were 
focusing on providing satellite service to mobile users left the market. So it's actually been kind of a almost a, a reversing year in satellite. There have been a few advancements, like QSnet Generation 5 uh, came out with, uh, you know, faster potential service, and there was ways to work around to take that and make it mobile. Yeah, and get pe people seeing speeds, 15 to 20, 25 megabit per second down, broadband speeds, very impressive. Yeah. Still has the high latency, but it is still a, an option for those that really want to go way off the coverage maps mm -hmm. and be connected. Yes. So those options are still there. But what's exciting is what's coming in the years ahead, and yes. that's the low Earth satellites. Yeah, so low Earth orbit satellites completely you know, redefine um, satellite broadband satellite internet because instead of a satellite 26,000 miles over the equator, you have something that is passing by just a few hundred miles overhead. It completely changes the type of equipment that's going to be needed. It changes how everything is really going to work. And well, it's, it's hopefully will be the story of the decade ahead of us because you know none of these things are out and really available yet, but there are at least three major low Earth orbit satellite constellations that will be rolling out in 2020, 2021, 2022, you know, all throughout the, the, the 2020s. And it can completely bring satellite back to relevance because we've satellites declined. There have been less and less mobile users using satellite that might turn around and this might become of something that is actually a viable competitor to um, cellular in a lot of places even. So a lot of exciting stuff coming. Uh, if you had asked us five years ago when we launched the Mobile Internet Resource Center that we would still be actively tracking all these changes all the time, we might not have gone into business because <laughs> it's too much work. <laughs> it is a lot of work to keep on top of all this. And that is why we are so thankful for our mobile internet aficionados. Our, we are funded by our membership to do this. We're not funded by uh, advertising dollars or affiliates or trying to sell you stuff. So we love being community funded. That has allowed us to bring on a staff of uh, friends who help us keep up with this sort of information and make this our full-time jobs and passion. We love what we do. <laughs> um, coming uh, in 2020, uh, we will be launching our first video course about mobile internet, helping uh, people figure things out from start to finish. Yeah, so we filmed 45 episodes for this video course, so it really kind of breaks down for the people who'd, who'd rather, rather than read our book, would rather have videos and have some interactive uh, elements to it. It's a whole new way to approach the content we provide, so it's a pretty exciting new project there. Yeah, so especially if you enjoy our video content here on this channel, then this course <laughs> might be for you. If you're just getting started, we'll help you figure out and assess your needs, understand the challenges of mobile internet, and then how to evaluate all these different options as they're constantly changing for your needs. Yeah, rewind back a decade to now, and just forecast ahead, the changes are not slowing down, and that is... Uh, that is the story of mobile internet right there. So in the last year, we have uh, redone our mobile internet resource center. We have put a lot of work into better bones of the system to go forward into the future uh, with organizing content and keeping it constantly updated. Our news stories, our guides, our gear center reviews. We offer a lot of content. If you haven't gone away from our channel here on the videos, <laughs> go over to the Mobile Internet Resource Center at mobileinternetinfo.com and check out all that we do offer there. Yeah. In particular, there's a companion article to this video that goes into a lot more depth about the all the changes we've seen over the past decade and what we're looking forward to in the decade to come in each of those major three areas of technology. So we are looking forward to the 2020s and joining you in this journey of connectivity. And uh, who knows, maybe we'll be in 16K video in two years. Ooh, two years. Uh, maybe, maybe oh, is that years. that fast? Maybe 10 okay. years. Uh, the jump to 8K, well, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that when we get there. <laughs> All right. Happy New Year, and may you be connected as you wish to be this holiday season. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.